up, friends? It's the Mitty Man coming back at you again from Walker's Music. Yet another word for the day. We are kind of a, indeed a privilege and honor to bring forth these here little videos and to the to the YouTube fam and the glory for the glory of God. It's never about Mitty Man, never about Mitty Man, but it's all for God's glory. And we give God on, and we give Him thanks for life, help, and strength. We thank Him for touching us this morning with the finger of love and we woke up and we woke up on due time and our feet touched the floor we was in our right mind we got the three of God thanks for that people nevertheless we also give honor to the YouTube fam from Baby Justice and all the way up to Big Pop JT and Weather Mom JT y'all know the routine we love you there ain't too much you can do about it also giving <clears throat> a shout out to the brothers, the King of Knowledge, and uh, for the, all the on time videos, but current events and what's going on, I call them prophetic events. And what's going on in our world was very, very, very crucial to uh, our knowing. To Brother PP Drawings, as well as Brother Hardencliffe, we all share, they let me know about these videos and about what's going on from the Harvest Army Ministry out of New York. We all, we love those. And uh, matter of fact, there's so much now going on, people, that people really need to get back. We need to go back to that old landmark. You know, what was good for Grandpa? It's still good for you today. In other words, God has not changed. Things change, but God does not. So, in other words, people, we got so much going on now in our church. And it's harvest time, people. In other words, it's harvest time it's for certain. But the thing about it, you got so many false reapers in the field that messing up the harvest. And I'm going to show you here this morning exactly what the Apostle Paul had to say about this here. So I want y'all to ride with me a little bit here the book of 1st Timothy, the letter, letter of Paul, 1st Timothy, 1st Timothy, the third chapter, we're going to start reading that, that very first verse, and this here kind of put it in a nutshell for us, because see, we need to get back to this here, people, Pastor Paul said, this is a true saying, if a man desired the office of a bishop, he desired a good work, okay, a bishop, people, is an overseer now. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. That word vigilant people is temperance. And the word apt means able, that's ability. In other words, being able to teach. Not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient. Not a brawler, not covetous. In other words, people, he's not addicted to things and not violent and not greedy for money. That's what that's saying. One that ruled well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. That means reverence. For if a man know not, now this is the catcher right here. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? That's a question that Paul posed. Not a novice, that means a rookie. Lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without lest he fall into reproach of the snare of the devil. Likewise must the deacons, there we go, be grave, not double-toned, not given to much wine, not greedy or filthy lucre, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. And let these also first be proved. Then let them use the office of a deacon, being found blameless, that in other words, you let them serve as a deacon. Then once they find blameless, then you put them in the office. Check this out. 
Even so, their wives must be great, not slamming. They got to be sober, faithful in all things. Let the deacons be the husband of one wife, ruling their children in their own house as well. For they have had for 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 they that have used the office of a deacon well purchased to themselves a good degree, meaning good standing, and great boldness in the faith, which is in Christ Jesus. People <clears throat> Paul gave us qualifications for church leaders right there. May God have a blessing to the readers, hearers, and especially the doers of his word. Now, I'm going to talk to you a little bit this morning, people. This is why, I'm going to let you know that this is how come we got so much hell in our church. It's because of the people and the individual that we choose to be leaders in our church. That's point blank. Paul said, he gave us the, the definition. He gave us the qualification that these individuals that we place over the body, these overseers and whatnot, they got certain qualifications that they and criteria that they must fulfill. Well, instead of them, first of all, being full of the Holy Ghost, we don't we don't worry about nobody being full of the Holy Ghost anymore. We just want to know what kind of uh, what how much money do they put in the collection plate. That's all we worried about nowadays. How much money? Just because so and so put X amount of dollars in the collection plate on every Sunday, he should be a deacon. I I I, not, I didn't see one time in that reading there of uh, Paul, Paul, Paul was talking to Timothy. No one mention of how much money had anything to do with the criteria for choosing church leaders. Now, once does he say anything about money? He said the greedy. He said something about that filthy money. He said you should a deacon shouldn't be greedy, neither should a bishop or overseer. They all really, if you look at it, they got the same qualification. The same criteria for an overseer, the deacon had that same criteria. But no, what we do, and this is how come people, and I'm gonna say it, I don't care. I mean, I'm gonna tell the truth. This is why we got so much hell in our churches. This is how come things are not going right. This is how come we got we 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 we, we get these deacons. They they get you they, they you 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 elect them to be church leaders and then they get they get in the position and then they think that they are above the pastor. Oh yeah. They people, if you would go back a little bit further, go on back up into the book of Acts. And you read about when the murmuring came about. The office of a deacon was created then in the early church when the Greek widows felt that the, the Grecians felt that their widow were being overlooked in the daily ministration. That's that's when the office of a deacon became prevalent. It became uh, on the church scene at that particular time. Their main function were to take care of this business. Peter and them said it is not meet for them that they will lead the word of God. Those were the preachers. It wasn't meet for them to lead the word and serve tables. So they he told them, said what y'all do, the people, you look out from among your own self seven men. And they told him the criteria. He said they must be first of all full of the Holy Ghost. See, right there, I mean I'm not going to even go into the other things they said. That one criteria, which is, I feel, the very the most important one, is they must be filled with the Holy Spirit. You don't need people that are not filled with the Holy Spirit to be a leader of nothing because they are not going to know how to lead. That's number one. So that was the first criterion, or the main criteria, I should say, that was most important, in my opinion, for, the, for choosing of church leaders. But now, deacons, I want you to hear one thing. This is not no disrespect because your job is a very important job. But your job was never to tell the pastor what to do. The pastor is the one that appoints you. The people pick you out, but the pastors are the one that appoint you. Now, how can you get above the one that appoints you? I never understood that from the very beginning. And I didn't, I mean, it don't take a rocket scientist with a slide rule with an L scale to figure out something, people. How can you? When you are appointed by an individual, how can you get over get, get be ahead of them? The people choose 
picks them out. They bring them before the preachers, the pastors. And the pastors, after much prayer and the laying on of hands, they are appointed to use the office. And then after you find blameless, that's when you become a full, quote-unquote, deacon. But let, look, let me tell you, deacon, guess what your purpose was? Your purpose from the very beginning was a servant. Your purpose was to make certain that the widows were taken care of and they were not cheated. That was your main function. That's why your office was invented. That's why the office of a deacon was created. It was never to tell the pastor how to preach or when to preach and nothing else. That was your job. Somehow or another, we've left the original plan. This is what's the matter in our churches today, people. We done left the original blueprint and we just went about making our own thing. Not just because of the fact that this man put $500 or this man put 1000 or this one put 1500 and we just putting people up in the office of a deacon and giving them all this power because we looking at how much money that they put in the, in the, in the, in the collection plate. Which money ain't got nothing to do with it when it comes come to right and wrong. Because we know it takes money to run anything. We know that. But not that filthy money. That's what the Bible said. Filthy lucre. Greedy. You got so many greedy people in the church until it ain't funny. They misusing funds. That, and we, we make this prayer. We get up and say, Lord, let this money be used for the purpose it was raised. And we tell a lie there because we don't use it for the purpose it was raised. Just throwing some out there, people. That's the truth. And this is what people don't like today. They don't want the truth. Anybody come to them with the truth, they want to get rid of. You want to get rid of, but somebody come with a lie, and you love that. Because of the fact that there's no God in you. That's number one. Jesus told it, Jesus told that to the Pharisees. Talking about, we, our father Abraham, he said, Jesus said, no, you lying. He said, because if, father, if Abraham was your father, you love me. In other words, if God was your father, you surely would love me because I come from God. So you see, we need to, that these people that are getting up in each other every Sunday. Oh, hallelujah. Pray God. Flipping over pews and hanging from chandeliers like Tars. Ain't got a bit of love of God in their heart. Because they don't know how to treat one another. Jesus said these words. And these are two commandments he left with us. And I done quoted these same thing more time now. I don't care to think about it. But it's still good. And until we get it right, I'm going to keep doing it. Jesus said, hear ye. Hear. The Lord our God is one God. Remember that. Love him with all your what? Heart, soul, mind, and all your strength. Paraphrasing. And the second one is like unto it. Love your neighbor as yourself. On these two rest all the what? The law and the prophet. People, if we just do that, that sums it all up. So what we, what, what, what we need to do now to get the church back in order? Go back to the original plan. Let some people be filled with the Holy Ghost. And if they're not filled with the Holy Ghost, Nobody should hold no position in the church. That includes ministers of music, including myself and anybody else. If you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, you should not hold an office in the church of God. That is the main criterion, in my opinion. Because if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you ain't going to know how to do nothing. This is Mitty Man saying peace. Goodbye.